Grandpa gestured towards a row of wooden cases, each holding a single pill. He explained that the pills on the right were the strongest, containing the most potent poisons. As you move to the left, the poison in each pill became weaker. He emphasized that the pills were specially designed to cause unbearable pain, but not death. It was a test, a challenge. He looked at Theo with a serious expression, leaving the decision entirely up to him. Would Theo accept the challenge? Theo swallowed the poison pill. His body felt heavy. He struggled to breathe. Grandpa watched him, a thoughtful expression on his face. Grandpa nodded slowly. He was impressed. Theo had taken eight poison pills. That was a lot. Theo coughed, a weak sound. He felt the poison burning inside him. He spoke, his voice raspy. He had finally found something that could challenge him. Grandpa frowned. He didn't believe Theo. He knew how dangerous these pills were. It wasn't that bad? He said, his voice sharp. Grandpa looked at Theo with a serious face. He asked Theo if he understood what taking the eighth pill meant. Theo looked back at him, confused. Theo had never thought about the pills having a deeper meaning. He had just assumed they were something that needed to be taken. Grandpa cleared his throat and began to explain. He told Theo that each pill had a specific purpose. The first pill was to see if someone could handle poison. The fourth pill tested if they could live in a land filled with poison. The eighth pill, however, was the most important. It determined if someone was worthy to enter the land of the dragon. This land was in the very heart of the spirit core, a place so dangerous that even the people of Mango Village dared not go. Grandpa then shared that Mabel had passed the first four pills without any training. She was incredibly talented. Mabel just laughed and said it was nothing. Theo, amazed, asked how far Mabel had gone. Mabel, with a hint of pride, said she had reached the seventh pill. Theo, trying to be encouraging, said it wasn't bad. Mabel, however, was not impressed. She rolled her eyes and scoffed at Theo's comment. Grandpa said that there was still more to go. He asked Theo if he wanted to continue on to the next stage. Theo, eager and ready, nodded. Grandpa, with a smile, handed Theo a bottle. This was the ninth pill. Theo, as he took the pill, had a thought. He had reached the breath of the sun, and that meant he could now burn things from within. He decided to try burning the pill inside his stomach. The moment he swallowed the ninth pill, Theo was struck. This poison was far stronger than the last one. He felt a wave of nausea, a desperate urge to vomit. His spiritual energy, fighting back, tried to push the poison out of his body. He knew he needed to burn it, but he was too weak. He had to endure. He would use the poison resistance he had built up over the years. He would fight through this. Theo lay on the ground, weak and gasping for breath. Grandpa watching him said that he should take the antidote now. Theo sweat dripping from his brow, his face pale with exhaustion, managed to say that he was okay now. Grandpa looked at him, a strange smile on his face. He said that Theo was quite the odd one and that he was back to normal. Theo regaining his strength, said that he could move on to the next stage. Theo regaining his strength, said that he would be grateful if Grandpa would allow him to move on to the next stage. It wasn't every day that he got to try high-quality poison like this. Grandpa looking at him with amusement, said that Theo, an outsider, wanted to try the tenth pill. He paused for a moment, then said that the tenth pill it was. He looked at Theo with a serious expression. Grandpa knew that Theo had gotten through all the pills with only the immunity he had built over the years, but this was just about the limit to where his courage could take him. Theo held the pill in his hand, studying it. It looked very similar to the last one he had taken. Mabel watching him, gasped in surprise. She couldn't believe he was taking it right away. Theo unfazed, swallowed the pill and said that he was right. It was almost the same as the ninth pill. But then, he paused, a look of confusion spreading across his face. He mumbled, Oh, wait a second. What? And then, he lost consciousness and fell to the ground. The monarch of a thousand elixirs, Marcia laughed a booming laugh. Theo had taken on the tenth pill. Mabel, her face filled with pride, explained that Theo had indeed taken the tenth pill. He hadn't passed the stage, but he had woken up after a few hours and was able to move around without even taking the antidote. Theo's body had gotten all chubby, and Mabel had been really worried that he wouldn't be able to wake up. But here he was. Marcia impressed, said that it was incredible for an outsider to make it past the ninth pill without ever taking the antidote. She wondered if Mabel had brought Theo here to get her approval so that they could marry. Mabel blushed and stammered, embarrassed by the suggestion and said that you're just like grandpa. Marcia laughed again, telling Mabel not to compare her to that old man. 
Marcia agreed to give Theo what Mabel wanted and handed her a pill. Mabel, her face filled with gratitude, accepted the pill. Theo, suddenly noticing something, raised his hand, a golden energy barrier shimmering around him. He was furious. Mabel, seeing his reaction, beamed with pride. She pointed out the barrier to Marcia, clearly impressed. Marcia, watching them, shrugged. She acknowledged that it could be due to the gold elixir Mabel had lost, but reminded them that nothing was certain. Though a spirit barrier of golden color was rare, it wasn't limited to the result of taking a gold elixir. The amount of training, the amount of lightning energy in one spirit energy also played a great factor in a barrier of that color. Mabel insistent said that it was definitely not the lightning energy. She had seen the fire and frost key with her own eyes. There was no way his barrier would be able to put off such a golden hue without him taking the gold elixir. Theo, remembering something from the past, felt a flicker of recognition in his mind. The gold elixir he had taken was the one he got from the Faceless Killer, and that gold elixir was related to the Mango Village. Marsha, watching Theo closely, noticed the guilt etched on his face. Theo, hesitant, admitted that it was something related to his past. He couldn't share it with her. Marsha, understanding, acknowledged that it was a bit rude but understandable. She explained that the reason why the gold elixir was so precious was because of its ingredients and crafting process. Even in this village, the three monarchs were the only ones that had taken the gold elixir. It wasn't easy to gather the ingredients to make the gold elixir, even in the poisonous lands. Mabel, suspicious, demanded the truth. Had he been born and raised here? If not, had he picked up a gold elixir he found lying around on the ground? It looked like a pearl. Theo, exasperated, insisted that she shouldn't say such outrageous things. This was his first time in the poisonous lands. Marcia, deciding to drop the subject for now, said that they would talk more about this later since they didn't know much about each other. She apologized for not asking his name yet. She introduced herself as Marcia, the monarch of elixirs. Theo replied, introducing himself as Theo and giving her permission to call him whatever she liked. Marcia, intrigued, said that she had one question for him. Theo, ready to answer, agreed. Marcia, curious, asked Theo what stage of alchemy he was at. She noted that his stage looked higher than that of a high-class law of spirit energy. She wondered if he had trained on his own. Theo, hesitant, confirmed that he had. He couldn't give her too many details, but most of the elixirs he had consumed were self-made. Marcia, impressed, suggested that he stay there and make more elixirs. Theo, considering her offer, thought to himself that he was confident in his level of alchemy. But working under her would allow him to improve and learn more about elixir craftsmanship. Marcia, sensing his thoughts, said that sacred herbs harvested from the village, as well as those collected from the outside, were piled up there. Theo would be able to make all the elixirs he needed there, and Mabel could help him too. Theo, convinced, said that there was no reason for him to refuse her offer. Mabel, catching up to Theo and Marcia, looked confused and excited. She called out to Theo, her voice filled with urgency, as if she had suddenly remembered something very important. She needed to go see the acid poison being made, Mabel, arriving at a place where the acid poison was being made, exclaimed that it was finally complete. She was excited, thinking about how happy her father, Oscar, would be. She went to him, but Oscar didn't approve. Theo, observing her, noticed her disappointment. He guessed that things hadn't gone well. Mabel, surprised, asked how he knew. Theo said that her face was giving it away. He had expected it the moment she ran with the acid poison in her hand. Mabel, teasingly, asked if he had been thinking about her. She challenged him, asking if he knew what kind of poison acid poison was. Theo, intrigued, asked her to explain. Mabel, mischievous, proposed showing him. She asked him to spread his spirit barrier. Theo, confused, asked what she meant. Mabel, eager to explain, said she would tell him more after she showed him. Theo, accepting her challenge, agreed. Mabel spread the acid poison onto Theo's energy barrier. Theo watched, surprised. The spirit barrier was falling apart. Mabel, seeing his reaction, smirked. She had surprised him. Theo, intrigued, asked if the acid poison was a poison that corroded the spirit barrier. Mabel nodded. She explained that it was actually misleading to call it a poison, as it didn't hurt the body at all. Theo, understanding, said that it would definitely help in the fight against the Exion sect. Mabel, excited, agreed. She wondered why Oscar kept saying no. Theo Thoughtful said that it was understandable. It wouldn't be easy with her older brother in the hands of the Exion sect. He wondered what method they hadn't tried yet. Theo, suddenly remembering something, stopped talking mid-sentence. 
Mabel noticing his change, called out to him, wondering what was wrong. She thought he wasn't listening to her. Theo finally snapping out of his thoughts, called her name. Mabel startled, responded. Theo, his voice serious, asked about the decision-making process in Mango Village. He wanted to know who was involved in debating extremely important matters. Oscar impatient, finally asked Theo why he had called them together. Theo taking a deep breath, explained that he had heard something while traveling with the Exion sect. He had learned that Oscar's son had been captured in their general assembly. Oscar confused, admitted that he had no idea where that was. Theo looking directly at Oscar made a bold proposal. He said he would be frank. If Oscar went with him to the general assembly, he would help rescue his son. Mabel whispering to Theo was confused and concerned. She wondered what he was doing. Grandpa dismissing the idea, told them to accompany Theo on his way back. He considered the whole thing a waste of time. Theo, understanding his skepticism, acknowledged that going to the Exion sect General Assembly was a risky and difficult proposition. However, he argued that it was the best time to act. Theo explained that the Exion sect had sent many people to the poisonous lands to find their people and steal their treasure. But, he reasoned, because of the General Assembly's reputation, there would be fewer talented alchemists there, making it a better opportunity for a rescue. Oscar, finally convinced by Theo's logic, gave his permission. Theo, continuing his explanation, pointed out that the General Assembly had also appointed and hired people in their branch offices. He reasoned that they must have sent most of their experts into the poisonous lands, leaving fewer experts at the General Assembly itself. This, he argued, was a crucial factor in their favor. Oscar, acknowledging the advantage they had in the poisonous lands, expressed his hesitation. He pointed out that giving up that advantage was a risky move, but he had already made a similar sacrifice for the village when he gave up Sean. He couldn't put the entire village at risk for one person. He made it clear that this was his decision as the two-faced monarch. He also admitted to having a feeling that Theo had saved Mabel to gain their trust and was now using that trust to manipulate them into leaving the poisonous lands. He asked if he was being too skeptical. Theo, looking at him with sincerity, denied his accusation. Theo, looking Oscar in the eye, confessed that he also had a target in the Exion sect. He was after the memoirs of an alchemist from the General Assembly. Oscar, confused, asked what he meant by memoir. Theo, explaining his reasoning, said that he had learned a lesson after meeting Mabel. A suspicious person like him needed to confess the truth to gain trust. He decided to tell Oscar the truth about why he couldn't reject the offer by the Exion sect lord, Iris, and had come as far as the poisonous lands. Oscar, expressing his disbelief, said that it was hard to believe Theo was from such a faraway continent. Theo insisted that it was the truth. Marcia, sensing an opportunity, decided to take advantage of Theo's promise to tell the truth. She asked him about his golden light spirit barrier, directly accusing him of taking the gold elixir. Theo, admitting the truth, confirmed that he had indeed taken the gold elixir. Marcia, acknowledging the situation, said that it seemed like the lost gold elixir had found its way to Theo. She added that it was meant to be. She then brought up Mabel's observation that Theo was at the law of spirit energy stage, yet he had used the fire and frost chi. Theo, explaining himself, said that he had been hiding his true stage using advanced techniques. He revealed that he was actually in the beginning phase of the Breath of the Sun stage. Mabel, surprised by this revelation, exclaimed in astonishment. Oscar, impatient, told them to stop the chatter and get to the point. He wanted to hear Theo's detailed plan. Theo, looking at him with confidence, revealed his objective, to take the Exion sect lord, Iris, captive. At Gaijong Province, Namjo District, Greg, a provincial inspector and law of spirit energy alchemist, tried to convince the old man to hand over the prisoners. He pointed out that it would save the cost of transporting them back and forth. The old man, however, stubbornly refused, yelling that there was no need for that. Greg, thinking to himself how annoying and stubborn the old man was, finally relented and allowed them to pass through. Greg, observing the prisoners and the old man, decided it wasn't worth the risk to confront them. He realized that he couldn't handle it if the old man, a breath of the sun alchemist, went berserk. He also noted that the energy stages of the prisoners were hard to estimate, almost like professionals. They arrived at Yenan region, metropolis, Huijing. A man, feeling the sudden breeze, commented on it. Theo assuring them it was safe now, asked how they felt about being back in the outside world. Oscar, impressed by the city, said it was fascinating but they needed to hurry. 
Grandpa agreed, saying they didn't have time to waste. Gabriel eager to start their mission, said they should get going right away. Oscar recognizing Gabriel's urgency, acknowledged his resolve to rescue his old friend, Sean. Oscar looking around, asked about the location of the Exion sect Huijing branch. Theo pointed it out, confirming that the building in front of them was indeed the branch. Grandpa observing the surrounding area, pointed out the lack of nearby houses, but emphasized the importance of minimizing any commotion. He suggested overpowering their opponents silently, lamenting the noisiness of Gabriel's boasted golden teeth locusts. Gabriel, however, assured them that he had other magic beasts at his disposal. Theo eager to start, agreed and said they should get going right away. Iris sensing something amiss, noticed the candle was out. She felt a chill run down her spine, realizing someone had broken in. The eerie silence made her nervous, convinced trouble was brewing. She cursed her luck, as this happened right when all the experts were away in the poisonous lands. She considered hiding in the camp or running away, ultimately deciding that running away was the better option. She knew she had to hurry. Iris hiding in the central garden, realized that leaving would force her to rely on the provincial inspector. As she cautiously stepped out, she sensed someone nearby. To her horror, she spotted one of her retainers lying on the ground, injured. Hiding behind the trees, Iris was filled with a mix of fear and confusion. She couldn't believe it was Theo. He was supposed to be in the poisonous lands. The thought that he might be the one who attacked her retainer filled her with dread. Iris realizing she needed to escape, decided to make a run for the wall, believing it would offer her safety. However, she was met by Oscar whom she recognized as the descendant of the Secret Valley. Oscar calmly stating that they came to visit her since she was searching for them, confirmed their presence. Iris enraged, fought back, creating a smoke screen to cover her escape. She knew she couldn't defeat him so she needed to run. But before she could make it to her destination, Theo's binding seal caught her, causing her to fall to the ground. Theo greeting her after a long time, noticed her exhaustion and suggested she take a peaceful rest. Theo reassuring the retainers that they were not involved and the target was Iris turned his attention to her. He noticed her feigned unconsciousness and told her to stop pretending. Iris burning with anger, glared at him, her fury evident. Iris with a hint of mockery, acknowledged Theo's successful completion of her request, but added that it was too well done, implying a negative consequence. She then revealed that her true objective wasn't the descendants of the Valley of Secrets, but their treasure. Theo puzzled, inquired about the treasure's significance. Iris, with a knowing smile, emphasized the treasure's irresistible allure to any alchemist. She offered Theo a final chance to rectify his actions. Theo remaining composed, asserted that he was already in the process of correcting his mistakes. Iris, voicing her disappointment, offered Theo a deal. Join her again and she would give him the memoirs he wanted, along with a reward for the treasure. Theo, however, firmly rejected her offer, stating that he would handle things himself. Iris, trying to sweeten the deal, revealed the treasure's origin, the High Ancient Era. Theo, pondering the information, wondered if it was similar to the Frost Pill from before. He then asserted that the treasure belonged to the descendants, reaffirming his commitment to their cause. Iris, with a casual and self-assured tone, argued that the strongest should possess the treasure, claiming that her sect, being stronger than the Valley of Secrets' descendants, would utilize it more effectively. Theo, however, expressed his disgust at her blatant display of greed and labeled it as the epitome of an alchemist's mindset. Iris, attempting to stir their curiosity, questioned whether they were intrigued by the treasure's capabilities. Grandpa, incensed by her continued attempts to manipulate them, threatened to inflict a gruesome punishment if she didn't stop speaking. Oscar, however, countered Grandpa's aggression, suggesting they listen to her further. He expressed his curiosity about the extent of her knowledge regarding them. Oscar, with a commanding voice, encouraged Iris to continue her explanation. Iris, revealing the nature of the treasure, described it as a special mask from the High Ancient Era. She explained that wearing the mask granted the ability to access the memories of ancient alchemists, unlocking knowledge from that era. She attributed the exceptional skills of the descendants at a young age to this knowledge transfer through the mask. She further linked their unique blue eyes and purple hair to the mask's influence. Oscar acknowledging her accurate information, confirmed that this was known as the divine powers of UNZ, adding that the Valley of Secrets alchemist's proficiency in taming magic beasts was also a result of the mask's knowledge. 
Iris directing her attention to Gabriel commented on his status as a breath of the sun alchemist, implying that he can achieve this level due to the mask's influence. Gabriel, enraged by her accusation, fixed his gaze upon her with a burning intensity. Oscar urged Iris to continue her story. Iris, with a knowing smile, spoke of the poison created by the people of the Valley of Secrets, saying it was notoriously difficult to manage. She believed the poison was a combination of the mask's knowledge and the ingredients found in the valley. Grandpa, however, disagreed. He scoffed at Iris's assumptions, declaring that their poison craft had nothing to do with the mask. He insisted the knowledge was passed down through generations of experience. Iris, unfazed by Grandpa's denial, simply smiled and excused herself. Iris, her eyes gleaming with ambition, spoke to Theo. She explained that the mask was a priceless treasure, a tool that could create countless valuable things. She declared that it wasn't too late for Theo to join their sect, offering him a high position and a share of the mask's power. And she reminded him of the memoirs, the ones he desperately wanted, the ones she held. Theo, understanding her intentions, calmly agreed. He acknowledged that she hadn't changed, but he needed those memoirs. He proposed a deal. Iris would need to name him and his people as the General Assembly of the Exion Sect. Iris, shocked by his audacity and the sudden shift in power, could only stammer in disbelief. Theo, his voice steady and firm, reiterated his demand. He told Iris that she would need to do as he said. Iris, enraged by his audacity, screamed in fury. But in the midst of her anger, a thought flickered in her mind. If Theo and his people were now the General Assembly, it meant they couldn't easily kill her. Iris, her anger replaced with a chilling calm, agreed to Theo's terms. She even chuckled, saying it would be interesting to see how things played out. She reminded Theo that the Valley of Secrets was known for its deadly poisons, playfully asking if he planned to use one on her. Theo, amused by her bravado, simply said that her confidence was almost comical. Undeterred, Iris challenged him to try. She boldly declared that she would simply die after taking the poison, her laughter echoing with a hint of dark humor. Theo, caught off guard by Iris's challenge, seemed unsure how to respond. He simply asked if something was wrong. Rachel, seemingly unfazed by the tension, stepped forward. She explained that she wanted to repay Theo for saving her life by using a special, potent fragrance on Iris. Iris, furious at Rachel's betrayal, screamed in anger. She reminded Rachel that she had taken her in, provided her with food and shelter, yet Rachel dared to rebel against her. Theo warned Rachel that attacking Iris would mean making the Exion sect their enemy. He assured her that he would find another way, as this was a task she couldn't handle alone. Rachel, however, remained resolute. She explained that the fate of a woman trained in crafting evil fragrances in the General Assembly was predetermined. She would be used as a tool by the sect and eventually forced to marry an alchemist of their choosing. Oscar, listening intently, stepped forward. He offered his help, promising that if things went well, he would allow Rachel to join the people of the Valley of Secrets. Theo, his eyes fixed on Iris, declared that the plan was set. Iris, her heart pounding with fear, knew she couldn't let them break her. She desperately sought a way to escape this fate. Theo, however, seemed unconcerned. He spoke of the evil spray fragrance, eager to finally witness its true power. Go, go.